How's it going guys? Today I decided to do a video on something that was pretty popular about three years ago and that's using old processors and pushing them as far as you can to get a cheaper gaming rig than you could have if you went out and buy brand new hardware. Uh, specifically I'm going to be looking into socket LGA775 which is about 10 years old now, uh, 9 or 10 years and Back in 2008, it was actually my first gaming rig was based off of that socket. It had a Q9650, which was a quad core, 3 gigahertz, no hyper threading, uh, overclockable, but I didn't dabble in it too much back then because I was too scared to burn up the very expensive hardware that I had bought. And you know, now that I'm older, these chips have drastically dropped in price. Uh, the Q9650 is actually <laughs> still expensive at around $65 to $75. And <clears throat> for being as old as it is, I mean, it still ran pretty good. Uh, now, I had that chip up until, I don't know, I want to say six years ago. And it was actually built in this case, but obviously I don't have it anymore. I'm going to be using a Xeon processor instead of the Q9650 which in my opinion is the best chip you can get for this socket because honestly I didn't want to spend the seventy dollars to get another one and I actually bought two of the Xeon processors the 5450s that I'll be using for right around thirty dollars I got two of them I'm not going to go through how to go and do all of the modifications to your motherboard in order to run the 771 chip because there's a lot better videos out there that can do it and I don't want to make this video any longer than it has to be. So this is ugh, man, this stuff's heavy. what we will be testing on. Stock cooler, only 6 gigs of RAM which is my fault because I bought 8 gigs to do this video with and by the time I got around to making the video, the warranty had expired, you know, over 30 days past the time I bought it. And I put in the sticks of RAM, and none of them worked. So we're going to go with what I had on hand, which is 6 gigs. I know it's a little disappointing, but it's really the best I can do right now. I don't want to go spend more money, because frankly, buying DDR2, this is 800 megahertz, it was the same price as buying DDR3. And I just thought that was ridiculous so I didn't want to do it and the other thing with this is uh, this was once a pre-built computer so the BIOS were locked so I was not able to overclock and there was a way to unlock it but with a lot of these older motherboards it's tricky depending on what motherboard you have to overclock these chips some people have great luck other people have terrible luck it's just luck of the draw so I'm going to take this as, you know, worst case scenario, what can you expect from this board or this chipset? However, if you can unlock it and overclock it as high as you want, you know, you will get better results. As to how much better, I don't know. I guess if this video gets enough likes um, and comments asking me to go as in depth to buy another board and better RAM, I'll do it. But considering I don't know how popular this video is going to be um, I'm not going to bother with it right now but you're more than welcome to let me know and if I feel that there's enough people that want me to do it I'll go and I'll buy the parts to make it happen but for now this is our test bed it'll be paired with this EVGA GTX 1060 Superclocked Edition I chose this card because it is the newest one I have on hand right now and it definitely will not bottleneck this system uh, I wanted something that a lot of budget gamers would be buying. Uh, ideally, for this kind of setup, if you're really trying to save as much money, uh, I'm assuming you would have gone for the 1050 or 1050 Ti. I just don't have one, so in terms of just seeing what this can output, this will work just fine. Now, instead of just putting up all the graphs and like everyone else does, I'm going to talk about each game that I did and uh, just throw a little footage in there because I know that this is not going to be the most amazing rig in the world. But I was really aiming to get 60 FPS in every game I tried, or as close to it, or just the smoothest experience I could. Um, however, I did not test Overwatch like a lot of people play because I don't play Overwatch, and I didn't want to buy the game just to test 
and then never touch it again. <laughs> and I didn't do League of Legends, which I know is pretty popular, but let's face it, a potato with toothpicks and it can run that game just as well as anything else. So in Battlefield 1, I played everything in about low to medium settings with me trying high settings at first, but nothing really became of it. Uh, it didn't seem to matter if it was on high or medium, the frame rate was pretty much locked at about uh, 30 to 40 FPS, which was playable um, in Team Deathmatch, but I imagine if you were to push that up to Conquest, you know, anything where there's going to be more players on the map, more going on, more explosions, gunfire, uh, it probably would have been close to unplayable. Uh, the CPU usage was pretty much pegged from the moment I turned on the game, and it just was not going to let me push that any further, no matter what settings I put on there. So I found that medium to low really gave me the experience that was at least playable on Deathmatch. Titanfall 2, which is one of my favorite shooter games at the moment, ran on medium settings, which was basically the default that it chose for me, at about 50 to 60 frames per second, with occasional drops coming in I'd see an occasional 40 but it was not a big deal it was totally playable it ran fairly fairly well in my opinion and I wouldn't mind playing it on that kind of state the CPU usage was about 70 percent which was really nice because it didn't really create any lag spikes occasionally I would see one but it was very rare the next game I played was Rocket League at 720p because for some reason it would not come out of 720p or go into 1080 like I was playing on at some other point, I'm fairly certain. I don't know if it was just my display settings at the time or what, it just would not come out of it so I just played it as it was. And with everything maxed I saw 130 plus FPS basically the whole game. So I did not think there was any reason to continue any further. I could have done split screen mode, which is one of my favorite aspects of Rocket League, but I didn't have anyone over to play with, and I figured if they weren't moving, it wouldn't really give much effect to just plug in a bunch of controllers and see what would happen. But with it ran running the way it did, I don't think we'll have any problem. Resident Evil 7, I actually managed to get in there. I had everything maxed out, and the FPS was locked at 60 frames per second. Not a single problem. I think it ran just as good on this computer as it does my primary rig, which is an i7. So it ran beautifully. And it looked fantastic. The CPU usage wasn't even that high. It was only about 60% to 70% on occasion. Uh, now that was not with a ton of action going on, but it really just goes to show that they did a great job optimizing this game. Now I picked MechWarrior Online, not because it's the prettiest game out there, but because it is known to be a CPU hog. And it certainly was. I saw 100% usage on the, all, all my CPU, and I was only able to squeeze out about 30 frames per second at best. I got all the way down into the teens on frames, I was having trouble keeping up. I imagine had I run everything on medium, I probably would have gotten a little better. But the fact that the CPU was just pegged the whole time doesn't lead me to believe that. So all in all, it was a bad experience. And the last game I did was Dirt 3, because I wanted to throw a racing game in there. I know Dirt's pretty popular. And it came in with everything maxed at a good solid 70 frames per second, occasionally 80 frames per second. Uh, occasionally screen tearing, because I did not lock the frame rate on any of these so that I would be able to see just how high it would pump them out. And I didn't want V-Sync or anything to mess with that. So if you enabled V-Sync or you capped your FPS, you probably would have even smoother, um, <clears throat> you would probably have even smoother results than I had. So in closing, would I recommend doing this? If you're on an extreme budget, and I mean extreme budget, and you want to get out of maybe console gaming, which is getting very left behind in my opinion, graphically, and just all around just user friendly, I would recommend it. However, I would not recommend it if you had to pay a lot for your parts. Now, even though the chips are pretty cheap, the motherboards 
are still pretty expensive, especially one that's overclockable. You're going to see that those ones have all the bids on them because it's still a, you know, a popular thing that people are doing right now, and that's going to raise the price up. I had trouble buying a, a good motherboard for less than 70 to $80 still, and that's the price of a new one. And then you start splitting hairs. Is it really worth it? Because so many people seem to think this is the magic bullet that they've just driven the price up. If you could get a combination of the board and you don't care about overclocking and you got a good Xeon, Xeon chip, then you, if you can keep it under 100 bucks, I'd say go for it. Uh, then, to, <clears throat> then to pick up your RAM, it's going to be about another, if you get 8 gigs, I think it was about you know, $50 still. You can get it cheaper, but you might run in the situation like I did where I bought a cheap set of RAM and none of it worked. And then you're out the money and then what was the point? Same as I'm saying that DDR3 right now is pretty cheap and you can get it for, for about the same price so you have to ask yourself is it worth it to do it there either. I think the lowest prices you're going to see on these chips right now have already happened so newer technology maybe the next generation you will see that those prices are starting to drop and it might be worth it just getting one step up from something like this. However, you will notice that on everything I played, they were completely playable. Certainly bottlenecked by the CPU, and if you wanted, if that was fine for you, and if you had maybe a less powerful graphics card, then maybe it's perfect for you. Uh, you can pick up different cards if you're really not into the super amazing graphics. Then you could get an older card that would run the games just as well for less than what you would spend on this. For example, since I happen to see it here. No, this is a GTX 570, which was in this system as its main card for the longest time. And I think you can pick this up for about $30. And it runs most games, especially things like your League of Legends or your Rocket League, all those. It'll run that just fine, probably at max frames. Even racing games, I think, would run perfectly on just a card this old. And... You know, it's a little less power efficient, which is another reason I like this small card. When it was idling, it was only taking 123 watts from the wall. You know, you could get away with it and you don't have to buy the newest and greatest chips. However, with how much performance gain has come out with the Pascal, I would be hard pressed to not recommend them. This is going to be basically worthless in about two to three years with the way that games demand more and more, especially if you want to have a smooth, good running experience. With Ryzen coming out later this year, I would recommend you wait for now, if you can, to see what they're going to bring to the game. And that will also bring down the cost of Intel chips, I'm hoping, which is what I'm waiting for before I upgrade anything. Because right now, everything's expensive. And if you're watching this video, that means you're at least somewhat budget conscious and you want to see how far you can push your dollar, which I completely agree with. Also, you might try something like the Socket 1150, which is last generation now, and the prices are starting to drop on it. And you could probably pick up a pretty good deal there that would perform better than this one with newer technology that'll last you longer. Because as I said, in a few years, you're just going to be buying more stuff. But that's it, guys. I hope you appreciated that I took the time to make this video for you guys. Hopefully you learned something and educated you a little bit about what you want to do with your system, or if you want to see just how much longer your system is going to last. Uh, please leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and uh, leave a comment, of course, if you, especially if you want me to take the time to find the parts to overclock this and really push it to its absolute limit. But as I said, this is basically your worst case scenario, how is it going to perform. Uh, please subscribe also if you do either of those things so that you can see if I do do the video, and I have a lot more content on the way. Thank you very much, guys.